the first inter the introduction of Linux Basics for Hackers, we talk about how to go ahead and download and install Kali Linux. But David's done some great videos on how to do that. So we're not going to replicate that. And David, you can give them links to how to yep. you know, to your videos. And you've got some great videos to do that. So we're not going to waste your time, folks, on doing that. You can go to David's excellent videos on how to go ahead and download and install it, either as a physical on a physical machine or a virtual machine. I use virtual machines. Why do I use virtual machines? Well, there's there's a lot of advantages of using virtual machines, but one of the things that those people who are in my classes know is that I use multiple virtual machines. So I, I'll have different virtual machines for different operating systems so I can switch between them. I can also use my virtual machines as target and attacker without having to go outside of my own system. So there's a lot of good reasons to use virtual machines. You can see the upper tab here. I've got Ubuntu over here. I've got a bunch of other systems on here. I got multiple versions of Kali because you know there's some of Kali, different versions of Kali do things better than others. So I'm running virtual machines all the time. There are some areas where virtual machines don't work as well as a physical machine. And one of those areas is radio hacking, you know, the SDR for hackers. There's there's really some difficulty with being able to maintain that SDR hardware to a virtual machine. It works, but not real well. And so there's one of the there's one of the drawbacks. Outside of that and a few other places, virtual machines are terrific for a learning environment and teaching environment. So Occupy the Web, two questions. Would you recommend for beginners start with virtual machines? And do I need to have the latest version of Kali Linux or is like an older version okay? Well, one, I recommend virtual machines. Virtual machines are, are great. So you need to have a little bit of knowledge of virtual machines to be able to function well. For As, as a, a beginner, a learner, you can maintain a closed environment where you're both the attacker and the target, and you don't have to worry about any legal issues of yeah. going out there and attacking targets that you know you shouldn't be on or are illegal for you to, to uh, target. Uh, so that's one of the reasons. Two is I can maintain many operating systems on my single system. If you're going to maintain multiple operating systems, the more RAM that you have in your system, the better it's going to run for you. And then, you know, there's a lot of beginners who want to use the latest and greatest. And I just got done teaching a class. And one of the things that happened in this class last week is that I'm running a year old version of Kali. And the things that we were doing actually worked better in this older version than worked in everybody in the class who had the newer version. So they had to actually downgrade their systems to be able to do what we were doing in class. So don't be fooled by, you know, the latest Kali or the latest, for that matter, Windows or what have you, is that sometimes the older things, if they work, there's no reason necessarily to upgrade them other than maybe for security purposes, right? But I, I maintain versions of Kali going all the way back to the backtrack days. So way back when, you, many viewers may not know this, but it used to be called backtrack. And so I've got versions of backtrack going back to backtrack one, and I've got backtrack two, back backtrack three, backtrack four. And then I think at backtrack four, it switched over to Kali. And that was somewhere around 2012, I think, or 2013, somewhere in that area. And so some of these older systems actually do what I want better than the newer systems do. So as a result, I have images of all of these old operating systems around. And sometimes I have to go back to them. But when I have a Kali that does what I want, why would I go and get the newest one? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, have to have a, I have to have a reason, not just because it's newer, I have to have a reason to go and, and go to the latest and greatest. So as you'll see in this particular video here, I'm using 2022.3. Why? Well, because it does what I want. And some of the changes that have taken place since then, I don't necessarily, aren't necessarily good for what I do. But from a Linux point of view, it doesn't matter, right? Because like the commands have been around forever. Yeah, the, the, the core, the kernel 
of Linux has been around since, what, 1993, 92? It's when uh, Linus Torvalds first released it. And and most of the commands are the same. And so the, the fundamentals of Linux, whether you're talking about Kali, Arch, Ubuntu, Parrot, Red Hat, you know, you go through all of the distributions. The primary commands are all going to be the same in all of these operating systems. So it doesn't really matter what version you're using. You could really do what you want to do in terms of hacking from an Ubuntu, okay, from Red Hat. These these are these are fine to use. The only real strength of Kali is that one, it's Debian. Okay. So and Debian handles many of the tools better. Debian is a distribution of Linux. So Kali is built on Debian. And so is Ubuntu, but they kind of, they fork from Debian in different, some different ways. But you could use Ubuntu, you could use Lubuntu, you could use Red Hat, you could use any of them. So when people often ask me, you know, which is the best Linux distribution? The answer is they're all good. And so the strength of Kali is that it's built on Debian, which works oftentimes a little bit better on some of the tools. And it has all the tools built into it. And Parrot, Parrot has the tools built into it as well. Black Arch has the tools. In general, you can move the tools from any of the Linux distributions. You can run them on basically any of the Linux distributions. So that's not really that big of an issue. It's more of a convenience issue rather than a functionality. Right. So one of the things that people who aren't from the Linux environment or Unix environment, there's a few terms and few ideas that are kind of important to introduce here. One is the term that people in Linux always talk about binaries, right? These are basically what people in other environments like Windows would call an executable. These are files that can be run. And these include simple things like, you know, the PS command, the cat command, the LS command, the CD command. Those are all binaries, as well as some of the tools that we use for hacking. Those are binaries. So when you hear that term, don't don't get upset. You know, that's it just means that it's like an executable. It's a file that can be run. The second concept that's really important in getting accustomed to Linux is that Linux is case sensitive. That means that a uppercase C and a lowercase C are two different things, right? So that if, for instance, there's, if you type desktop with lowercase letters, that's different than uppercase letters. So for instance, let's just take a look at our, our Kali here. We can go to, there is a directory called desktop. And if I go ahead and go CD desktop, right, like this, it's going to come back and say, there's no such directory, file or directory. Why? Because I didn't start it with an uppercase T. So if I go and do it like this, right, which is the way it's actually supposed to be, you can see it goes to desktop. So if you get this message right here, no such file or directory, one of the first things that you want to do is check to make sure that your case is correct. In this case, I would, you know, if I was a beginner, I might look at that and go, my God, I know that there's a desktop, right? There's got to be a desktop on this system. What's wrong with my Linux? <laughs> and and really all it was is that you didn't start it with a, didn't start it with an uppercase D. So that applies to almost everything in Linux, that it's case sensitive. Windows is not case sensitive, so this is going to take a little bit of getting accustomed to. A directory is the same thing as what some other operating systems might call a folder. So it's a directory. It means this is where I'm storing all of my files. 